Welcome back friends. Uh, in this video we are going to talk about a very very complicated machinery of recombination. This is called the CRELOX or CRELOX recombination. Uh, mm, if you learn uh, the basic technique of recombination like the homologous model of DNA recombination as well as this conservative site specific recombination then uh, this understanding will be fine for you but if you don't know about this uh, normal basic or basic pro property of recombination of uh, homologous recombination or site specific recombination I recommend you to go back and uh, look for those videos you can find those videos in my website too uh, in my uh, YouTube channel you can find those uh, like the serine recombination as well as the Tarasin recombinant videos which are the conservative site specific recombination videos I recommend you to go see that first then come back and listen to this lecture otherwise it will be hard for you to understand okay so let us begin with uh, the process of uh, Crelox recombination the Crelox recombination is actually a uh, site specific recombination is a type of tyrosine uh, recombinant system and in this tyrosine recombinant system we are going to see what is going on now uh, in, in, in just like the tyrosine recombinant system uh, in this case too the tyrosine recombinant is involving as uh, uh, or helping uh, for establishing the work of recombination now the, there are four tyrosine uh, recombinants which are really important in this case as in, in uh, as the case of tyrosine recombinant system in other cases now you can see these are the two strands this is the DNA this is DNA 1 this is the DNA 2 now the DNA 1 is denoted with blue color DNA 2 is denoted with red color and the DNA 1 and 2 are having the they both of them are having uh, the tyrosine recombinants two of the tyrosine recombinases now this tyrosine recombinants will bind uh, to the tyrosine recombination recognition site uh, they bind with those recombination sites and the site in between these recombination sites are called the crossover sites so all this case uh, remains the same now what this tyrosine recombinants can do they are actually uh, having uh, the hydroxyl group uh, as a result at their active site because the tyrosine have the hydroxyl group uh, so this enzyme uh, having the tyrosine gr uh, group or having the hydroxyl group at its active site uh, can attack the phosphodiester bond with the help of this oxygen which is nucleophile so it will attack and hold on to the phosphate it, it can have so it will attack and hold on to the phosphate now again what they are creating by attacking this phosphodiester backbone they are creating a phosphate uh, uh, tyrosine intermediate it is called the tyrosine phospho uh, phosphotyrosine intermediate now this phosphotyrosine intermediate which is formed is at the 3 prime end so again in this case we are talking about the 3 prime phosphate group formation right after the uh, right after the cleavage so 3 prime phosphate and it will generate uh, the 5 prime hydroxyl in this case too so this is a sound of weird but still we have seen in case of uh, phosphotyrosine intermediate formation uh, there is a 5 prime hydroxyl and a 3 prime phosphate which, which must be generated for carrying out the phosphotyrosine recombination uh, system okay now they produce this 3 prime phosphate and the 3 prime phosphate will attach to the tyrosine uh, uh, recombinants to make the phosphotyrosine residue and it, it will also have uh, this 5 prime hydroxyl which is free now uh, one of uh, each strand of this DNA sequences are cut in such a way now right after the cleavage this is called the first cleavage because you, you can see in this uh, whole procedure there are two different cleavages will be occurred and two uh, uh, resealing uh, we can see okay now this is the first uh, strand cleavage and right after the strand cleavage the hydroxyl which is a 5 prime hydroxyl in this case will attack the opposite uh, strand of the opposite DNA and the same way uh, it will uh, this hydroxyl of this red strand will attack uh, the, the, the phosphotyrosine group of uh, the blue DNA in this case okay so right after this attachment what will happen they will provide uh, uh, right after this uh, nucleophilic attack they will combine or reseal the uh, those regions or reseal those nicks as a result of what will they produce they produce a structure like that so they, they will produce a structure like this and then again uh, this this another strand is there then another strand will be cleaved by this green colored recombinases and then right after the cleavage of this green colored recombinases they are again producing the 5 prime hydroxyl and 3 prime phos uh, 5 prime hydroxyl and 3 prime phosphate and again those ph hydroxyl will attack the phosphate and right after all this cleavage and resealing uh, what will produce what will they produce they produces a structure like this 
So this structure is resembling the structure of a holiday model because in holiday model we have seen that four strands are joined at a particular place and in those situations we need to cleave uh, uh, those junctions to separate those DNA out because remember in any kind of DNA recombination that is the take home message of what I have I have talked for many videos that uh, out all after the recombination you must produce the number of DNA which are involving in this uh, DNA uh, recombination procedure so it's no it doesn't matter whatever you are doing with the DNA sequence but it, it, it you have to produce the number of DNA which is in the previous time so the DNA you've taken for for all those recombination events you must uh, re uh, recreate or, uh, or you must provide at the end of this total uh, proceed procedures okay so right after the formation of this holiday junction intermediate between the strand cleavages as we have seen in both the cases remember in this in this picture uh, look at very carefully uh, only one strand separation is uh, is uh, noted or is uh, printed but there is another strand separation of this blue and red strand that is also separated by the same procedure and right after the separation we end up with the formation of this uh, this holiday junction. Now right after the formation of the holiday junction we need to resolve the holiday junction. That's the rule of the nature that we have to resolve the holiday junction. Now how we can resolve this holiday junction? Again as we are having this tyrosine uh, uh, recombinases then this tyrosine recombinase can easily attack this strand uh, at a particular site uh, because it's specified so it will attack the particular site and cleave from the site and again it will uh, degrade the phosphodiester bond and hold on to a phosphate and generate a, a, a hydroxyl group again in this case 5 prime hydroxyl 3 prime uh, phosphate and phosphate is attached to the tyrosine recombinase as 3 prime phosphotyrosine residue now right after the generation of this site uh, it's a time for ligation and the second ligation will occur in this case and the second ligation will be carried out by the 5 prime hydroxyl which is created right after the second strand cleavage in this in this whole procedure now this oxygen of the hydroxyl will attack as a nucleophile into the phosphate and the phosphate and hydroxyl will make a bond and the phosphodiester bond is created and it is restored and right after the restoration what will produce we produce two uh, to uh, recombinant strands. Now a question can be arised because in all the cases when you when you see uh, the v video of tyrosine recombinase as well as uh, uh, serine recombinase, I don't have to care about the serine recombinase because that is too much different uh, from this uh, Crelox recombination. But in this recombination, uh, uh, it is much more similar with the tyrosine recombinase system. But there is a difference be between the tyrosine recombinase system and the Crelox system. In this Crelox system, we can see we have produced the holiday junction so we need to resolve the holiday junction so that's why we need to go through two round of cleavage and two round of ligation but in case of normal triterosic recombinant system we usually do not produce this holiday junction model so we produced we just uh, cleave for first time and then reseal and that that we, we have done right but in this case that that is differing why because in this case the tyrosine recombinants that are going to bind into the two of the strands of the DNA but remember in case of uh, in case of uh, those normal tyrosine recombinases there is only one strand binding of this recombinase enzyme if I go back uh, through this book and here you can see now look at this tyrosine recombinases these are also the tyrosine recombinases but it will bind in with only one of the strand of the DNA sequence so we do not need to uh, so we can easily disrupt this DNA strands and you can take it apart from from uh, from this binding and you can take it apart and attach with itself atta attached with ourselves right but in in the case of uh, Crelox recombination uh, there is not the the case because this recombinase enzyme bind with both of the strands so there is a difference between this uh, this enzyme this tyrosine enzyme which is created by this Crelox system now more importantly this tyrosine uh, recombinase which is produced is, is called the CRE protein or Cre protein now this Cre protein if we look at the structure so Cre protein is a type of uh, tyrosine recombinase, right? So this Cre protein is having an uh, extraordinary structure which is varying from the normal or conventional tyrosine recombinases. Where? Because the Cre protein is having a domain with binding with the whole DNA. So it creates a pocket uh, through which the DNA can pass as you can see in this picture. Let me take a color. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So here you can see there are these are the segments. Uh, these are the different segments and this is the center and the from through this center the DNA helix can pass easily so it creates a hole or channel for the DNA to pass and it sits on the DNA so 
it is hard uh, for this DNA segments to to be ripped out from its uh, hydrogen bonding and can be resolved uh, easily so that's why it cannot be resolved so easily we need to have a tight complex formation which is a holiday junction then we need to cleave it and take it away okay so right after the event uh, right after this event what we produce we, we, this hydroxyl attack the second ligation second strand exchange ligation then we produce this okay but if you if you imagine if you think uh, in this picture again if you uh, let let zoom into that this part right after that you can see uh, this hydroxyl attack this phosphate this hydroxyl attack this phosphate and right after that uh, there must be a bond after the ligation there must be uh, the green uh, purple purple green but uh, the sequence is varying in this case w instead of green purple purple green we are having the purple green and uh, green purple why so uh, the answer is it's just uh, the shuffling of this so just take it just take it uh, take this and just orient this this the reorientation is occurred so we, so we just rotate it 160 180 degree we just rotate it 180 degree and as a result of this rotation we produce this so for the simplicity sake for your understanding purpose we need to orient that so this picture these two pictures are correct and we are just orienting 180 degree at this direction or uh, at, uh, at the other direction okay we'll produce this and right after that it happens like that okay so so again uh, in this tyrosine uh, in this cre lox recombination uh, the another important thing is that the enzyme it is pro pro uh, produced by uh, the dna code is called the cre or cre now the cre dna has a distinct site for binding the both of the strands of the dna and uh, the site of the dna where the cre uh, binds or uh, cre protein bind is called the lox site or lox that's why this process is called the cre lox recombination this resembles the recombination of tyrosine recombinant system but still varying in many different ways as we have seen uh, uh, before okay and this kind of cre lox recombination system is n uh, usually common in phages or bacteriophages for example bacteriophage t4 or something like that so uh, so that's all about the Crelox recombination system. If you don't understand all these things, uh, just uh, send me mails or uh, post it uh, on YouTube. I will be happy for replying. Okay. Thank you.